hey how is it going on guys so in this video i'll discuss about the part two for this question longest common subsequence in the part one i've discussed about the recursive approach to solve this problem and then the top down db solution here i'll discuss about the bottoms of db solution first and then we will try to optimize space over it so in case you haven't watched the part one i'll highly recommend you to watch the part one and then come back to this video i'll link the part one in the description section so let us see where we left off in the last video so we have created something like this. This is a top-down DB solution. Now, what we have to do is we have to convert this top-down DB solution into a bottoms of DB solution. So in case you guys have doubts about top-down DB, bottoms of DB, you can just find it over the internet. What's the difference between these two? Here, I'll just give you a brief idea about it. So whenever you are writing a recursion and in your, in your recursion, you have overlapping subproblems. So consider this case. This is a recursion method, LCS, and you can see there are sub problems, same sub problems recurring over again and again. So these are called as overlapping sub problems. So in case your recursion has overlapping sub problems, you do not calculate them again and again and again. What you do is when it's called for the first time, you will just store it somewhere in a table. And when it's called for a second time, you won't call recursion over it. You will just get its value from the table. That's what we did over here. Here we have the table name is DP. And we are checking before calling the recursion whether dp of ij is not minus 1. In that case, we are running dp of ij. And uh, whenever we are calling a recursion, we are just storing the result in the dp array over here and over here as well. So when you are introducing a dp array in the recursion itself, then it's called a top down dp. In the bottoms of dp, you have to create the dp array one by one, line by line. So let us see now. Now, one thing the dp array is going to be of size m plus 1 plus n plus 1 for bottoms of dp. Why is that? The reason for this is because we have to handle this case. Now this was a base case in case of top down dp. So even if over here I write return dp of ij equals 0, it won't create a difference in complexity. Why is that? Because this is O1 complexity. So in top down dp, we don't store the best base values in the dp array. But in bottoms of dp, you have to store all the values in the dp array. So we have to handle this case as well. That is when i equal equal text dot length or j equal equal text two dot length. So in order to handle that case, we have to increment the size of dp array by one row and one column. Now, let me just comment this out. Now, as you can see in the top down dp, we have called the top down dp from here at index zero comma zero. So in the bottoms of dp, now the my solution will lie at 0 comma 0 index. That is, so suppose this is a dp array. So the solution will lie over here, somewhere over here. This, this is 0 comma 0. So if our solution is lying over here, we will try to fill this out from the opposite corner. Normally, this is what we do in dp. So we will try to figure it out from this index. And we can go either row wise from like this, from right to left, right to left, right to left, and finally reach. 0, 0 over here or we can go column wise as well okay both are same so what will i do is i'll just start from this index and i'll just go row wise from right to left so over here i'll write for int i equals m i greater than equals 0 i minus minus similarly for int j equals n j greater than equals 0 j minus minus now let's consider this case if i equal equal text dot length or j equal equal text 2 dot length we are running a 0 so since what we will write over here is we will handle this case so in case i equal equal text 1 dot length which is m or j equal equal text 2 dot length which is n so in that case our dp array will store 0 next else if this condition if the current character matches so we'll write if text one dot carity i equal equal text two dot carity j then as you can see over here we are calling the recursion for i plus one j plus one so here we will say dp of ij equals dp of i plus 1 j plus 1 so in top down dp we are calling for i plus 1 j plus 1 and we are storing in ij so here we are just storing in ij and we are calling for i plus 1 j plus 1 again and in the last condition else 
what we were doing over here is we are doing dp of ij equals max of we are calling recursion for i plus 1j and ij plus 1 so similarly over here i'll just write dp of i j equals math dot max of dp of i plus 1 j dp of i j plus 1 and our answer will lie over dp of 0 0 why dp of 0 0 because we have called the recursion for 0 0 so what i can do is i can just remove this thing let me remove this thing as well okay and let me just run this code let's see so we are getting a wrong answer let's see what mistake we have done okay over here when text one dot i equal equal text two dot carity j what we were doing is we are calling for i plus one j plus one and we are adding one to it so i forgot to add one over here you can find in the recursion we were adding a one over here so let me just run this code again so it's giving the correct result let me submit this solution so yeah it got accepted so this is the bottoms of db solution now what we will do is we'll try to optimize space over it now in top down db and in bottom up db both the solutions have same time complexity that is o m into n and same space complexity that is o m into n the space complexity is because of this db array now i've discussed about a concept previously as well so the concept says is when you're filling the db ith row and it's only dependent upon the i plus 1th row as you can see over here and here then you can reduce the size of the db array so as you can see in order to fill db ij i just require db i plus 1 data correct so what we will do over here is we'll just decrement the number of rows to two we'll introduce a flag over here and flag which is zero and instead of storing value at dpij we'll store value at dp flag j so whenever wherever we are calling dpij we'll call dp flag j and wherever it is i plus one we'll just call flag zor one similarly flag zor one over here after the first iteration is completed we have to do the toggle so flag zor equals one and we'll return dp of flag zor one from here as well so let me just run this code it's giving the correct result let me submit the solution so it got accepted again so in this case we have reduced the space complexity to on so in case you have doubts about this technique i have already made a video and i'll link it down in the description section in which i've discussed about this technique thoroughly so in case you guys have problems about this technique you can go through that video as well so i guess that's it from the video so in case you've learned anything from the video you can hit that like button and in order to support my work you can subscribe to my channel as well thank you all